In the last presentation, we have seen about the basics of SQL. Now, in this presentation, we will focus on data definition language DDL. Let's step into the topic of the day. We know very well that SQL has four sub-languages or different types. The first one is the data definition language, which is called as DDL. The second one is data manipulation language, which is well known as DML. The third sub-language is DCL, the data control language. And the fourth one is TCL, the transaction control language. And we are going to focus on DDL in this presentation. So what is this DDL? We know DDL is a sub-language of SQL. So whatever commands we are using in DDL are directly going to affect the structure of the table. What is the structure of the table? A table is basically comprising of rows and columns. Say, if you are talking about rows, then we are talking about the data portion. If we are talking about the columns, then we are directly dealing with the structure. Say, for example, if we have a table with three columns, let's say column number one, column number two, and column number three. Now, whenever I make any changes with respect to the column or the entire structure of the table itself, then these commands are called as DDL commands. In case, I am just going to change the data of a row. Say, for example, I want to modify the salary of a person. When I do some modifications at the row level, it means I am working on the data portion. So when I work on the data portion, it is not DDL, it is DML, the data manipulation language. Whereas here in this presentation, I am focusing on DDL. So anything that deals with the structure of the table is called as DDL and these DDL commands are auto-committed. It means whenever you make any changes using DDL command, we need not explicitly issue a commit command in order to save the modifications whatever we have performed because the nature of DDL commands are by default auto-committed. So no need to explicitly commit or save whatever the changes we have made. Don't worry about this point. I will elaborate about this point auto-commit in the TCL part, the transaction control language part. There you will understand how commit works and what is the need for commit and we will also come to know why do we need to commit a transaction in DBMS. Let's now see what are all the various commands that are there in DDL. The first one is the create command. The second one is the alter command. The third one is truncate. The fourth one is drop. And the fifth one is rename. So all these five commands are the part of DDL. I will just give you a briefing about all these commands. For that, I want an example table. Let me bring in an example table here. Let's say this is the table that we want to focus on. How many columns are there? There are four columns. ID is the first column. Name is the second column. Department name is the third column. And salary is the fourth column. And what is the name of this table? Let's say the name of the table is employee. If there exists no table like this in our memory, and if I want to create the structure, say for example, I am going to create a table with four columns, ID, name, department name and salary. Here there exists no table and I want to create a table with four columns. So this can be done using the create command. So create is a DDL command which is used for creating a new object. Here in this example, the object is table. So I can create a table using create command. So obviously this is a DDL command because it's dealing with the structure of the table. How many columns are there? What is the order of the column? What is the data type of each column? Say in this case, the first column ID is of number data type, whereas the second column name is of character data type. So whenever any command that deals with the structure of the table, so that comes under DDL. So obviously create is a DDL command. Let's assume I have already created a table like this. Inadvertently, I missed to include a column. Say for example, after salary, I want a new column called gender. Is it possible to do that? For that, if I create a new table, then obviously it's a wastage of memory, right? So already there exists a table. The only requirement for me now is adding a new column. In such case, I can go for alter. So alter is used to deal with the structure of the table by adding a new column or dropping an existing column or changing the data type of the column. So anyway, alter is also going to deal with the structure only. And that is why alter is also a DDL command. And coming to the third and fourth DDL commands, truncate and drop, they are going to perform remove operation only with some differences. Don't worry about this. I will explain about this separately in one of the coming lectures. And the last one is rename. Say the table name is employee. I want to change the name of the table as employee underscore details. 
here it is also dealing with the structure of the table because this table is going to contain four attributes and all these four attributes id name department name and salary are linked to the name of the table employee in this case if i want to rename this table name and all these four columns are going to be linked to a new table name since rename is also dealing with the structure of the table rename is also a ddl command i hope this presentation has given you some insights about the various ddl commands in the coming lectures we will see how to create a table alter truncate drop and rename a table elaborately with some examples i hope you enjoyed this presentation i'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching